San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Wednesday, April 7th. Hope you're having a good week so far. Glad you are with us. Have you ever heard of Diablo's Southwest Grill? Uh, not until now. Okay. Until now. It's a chain of burrito shops in Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. And one of them was broken into last weekend. And the owner decided to take um, a positive yeah. angle on them being robbed. So uh, just to give you a little background, there's a video you're looking at. The thief busted into the Wheeler Road burrito chain by smashing the glass front door with a brick and uh, made off with, uh, with the empty cash register. So the owner decided, and his name is Carl Wallace, he got word that somebody had broken into the grill and he decided to post this on Facebook. And it's rather lengthy, but we're going to read it for you because mm -hmm. we think it's remarkable. He said, our burritos are such a smash hit. We've got people breaking in at 4 a.m. for their fix. So if you see our door looking hurricane fabulous at Wheeler Road, this is why. To the would-be robber who is clearly struggling with life decisions or having money issues, playing, please swing by for a job application. And still part of the post there continues on saying there are better opportunities out there than this path you've chosen. My personal cell is 706-513-3557. No police, no questions. Let's sit down and talk about how we could help you and fix the road you're on. Sincerely, Carl. Uh, people obviously embrace this positive call to action. Uh, leading up to Easter. The post has since gone viral. No word yet if the uh, perpetrator has taken the owner up on his offer of a job just yet. But I think it's gracious and shows yes. a different kind of kindness that in many ways is rare these days. It's very rare. I mean, well, and you see this with the shares, 4,300 shares mm -hmm. and 600 comments. Well, way to go, Carl. Some good news out of Georgia. Yes. Let's look at today. It's night at nine. Expert witness Sergeant Jody Steiger will continue his testimony in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin today. He'll likely face more questions about why he determined Chauvin's use of force on George Floyd was, quote, excessive. President Joe Biden says all adults in the U.S. will be eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine by April 19th. That bumps up the deadline by two weeks. Metro Health says Bear County has now confirmed six cases of the COVID-19 variant first detected in the UK. The president of Community Lab says he's worried these variants could lead to another surge in infections. Later today, the European Medicines Agency will announce the results of its investigation into the connection between AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine and rare blood clots. The agency and the World Health Organization have repeatedly said the vaccine is safe and the benefits outweigh the small risks. New study finds that one in three people who had COVID-19 may later experience brain disease. The study found 34% of COVID survivors received a neurological or psychological diagnosis within six months of infection. A new survey from the Biden administration found that even though schools are reopening, not all students are going back. The survey said nearly 46% of public schools offered all students five days a week of in-person learning in February, but just 34% of students went full time. A U.S. military commander in the Asia Pacific region says China appears to be accelerating its timetable for retaking Taiwan. The move is widely seen as the most likely trigger for a potential war between the United States and China. The Chinese government is warning the U.S. not to boycott next year's Winter Olympics in Beijing. It comes after the Biden administration said it was talking with allies about a joint approach to complaints of human rights abuses. Today is National Beer Day. It's celebrated every year on April 7th because in 1933, the Colin Harrison Act went into law. The new measure made the selling of low alcohol beverages like beer and wine legal again in the United States. And that's today's 9 at 9. It's already really, really warm out there. This is about the temperature it was before sunrise this morning. Uh, yes, and it's only going to get warmer. It is. It feels like a summer day, really, when we're starting off in the 70s and it's this humid. We're thinking probably 90s this afternoon. That's where we were yesterday. You see the scene outside right now. It's still pretty murky. Clouds break up. We'll see sun this afternoon. Let's look at the headlines as uh, we go forward in time here. We'll get a front this afternoon. Despite that, it'll still be hot. It's just going to bring in some drier air. And then some fog tomorrow. 
More 90s in the forecast and a slight shot at some storms on Friday, although uh, emphasis on slight. It's not looking great. Pollen count not looking great either. 18,970 for your oak. Highest count this season. It's very high. Mold, pine, grass, all in the low category. And uh, looking at uh, temperatures, we're in the 70s in most spots in Bear County. 69 King Lake, 73 New Braunfels, 60s up there in the Hill Country. Forecast calls for those clouds to break up. We'll be close to 90 later today. Winds will switch around to the north as our front comes through 10 to 20 miles per hour. The front could kick off a shower to east of here. We'll talk more about that in that potential for storms on Friday coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. We have some flashing lights. Looks some sort of incident right now is slowing traffic down at I-35 and Evans Road right now. It looks like traffic is still flowing in that area, but we are expecting backups in that particular part of town. I don't have a direction for you right now. If Transguide could zoom out a little bit or pull back on the shot, we'll check back with it coming up a little bit later in the newscast. Thank you. And top stories we're following today. We now know the name of one of the people found dead in a north side home yesterday afternoon. Your county medical examiner identifying him as 53 year old Todd Hafer. Officers found his body and a woman's body at a home in the 2000 block of Chittam Trail during a welfare check. This after someone told police they had seen the man or woman had not rather seen the man or woman in days. Neighbors say they're heartbroken by the tragedy and they are praying for the family of the victims. We're very sorry about your loved ones and whatever happened to them and our thoughts and prayers are with you and they can they're welcome to come over anytime um, for any kind of support or anything that we can do to help. Investigators say it's too early to tell if the case is related to domestic violence or if it could be a murder suicide. Right now we're still waiting to learn the woman's name. Man rescued from a house fire on the south side yesterday afternoon has died. The medical examiner's office identified him as 73 year old Alfredo Hernandez. The fire happened in the 1500 block of Estancia near Roosevelt and Loop 410. A neighbor told fire crews that the man was wheelchair bound and might still be inside. Firefighters got him out. He was taken to the hospital to be treated for smoke inhalation where he later passed away. The Texas State Trooper who died last week during a traffic stop will be laid to rest today. Department of Public Safety says Trooper Chad Walker was shot by a driver he pulled over last month near Mejia, about 75 miles southeast of Dallas. After the shooting, Walker was put on life support until his organs could be donated. He died March 31st. A funeral service will take place at 10 this morning in Grosbeck, which is about 40 miles east of Waco. We're going to have more coverage of his funeral in our later newscasts. In your morning headlines, we have firefighters and good Samaritans coming to the rescue today. Saving Grandpa and some of the most majestic animals on Earth. Our David Sears is here this morning. Good morning, David. It's kind of like a hero episode. I like it. Okay. Morning headlines. So we'll get right to it for you. First, let's take it to Jackson Heights in Queens, New York. You are looking at flames burning up an apartment complex. The fire grew to eight alarms. 21 people, including 16 firefighters were injured. The fire started on the top floor of a six story building. It started as a four alarm blaze. 400 firefighters ended up responding to fight that fire. All right, now let's take it to Philadelphia. That is an explosion about to happen. Look at that. The front of this house just ends up in the front yard. Surveillance video from across the street. When firefighters arrived, they could see the front of the home was gone. The second floor on fire. What they didn't see is what happened just before they arrived. A good Samaritan saving a 61 year old man's life. That was also surveillance video that you saw at first. Rake and Dyer heard the man and then he went to save the man. I just heard him crying and screaming, so I went in and tried to help him out. And I went upstairs because he was on fire. So I put him out with the extinguisher. And I picked him up, put him on my shoulder, and I came downstairs. Once I got him out, I was scared. Like, I can't believe I went in there. Yeah, but thank God he did. The man was treated for smoke inhalation. He's going to be all right. Rakin said he would hope someone would do the same if it was his mom or grandpa. Crews had to turn off the gas. 60 firefighters fought the blaze. No word on exactly what caused that explosion. Now let's take it in Northern California. We are with some rescuers slowly creeping up on that tree right there behind that tree. Ooh, it's a bald eagle. Here we go. There's a guy with a net and got him. Now there is a reason why they're capturing this big bird injuries. The big guy pretty beat up, had a big wound on its head, another one on its neck and another one on its wing. But that's not all. He has a very large wound up against his skull. 
uh, that we've cleaned out. It will take several cleanings to finish cleaning that out. It's fighting for its life. It has no idea that we are trying to capture it to save it. Yeah, those folks rescuing the birds said it wasn't injured by humans. It appears it was attacked by another eagle, a fight over territory rights and breeding rights. The eagle started to eat again. The animal center had some stored up mice for him. It'll take several weeks for him to recover, but when he is strong enough to fly again, they will take him back to that spot where they made that rescue. And another rescue for you, and this is no whale of a tail, it's the truth. That is a beached whale. This is off the uh, coast, or right on the coast of New Zealand. One of the rescuers, a former rugby player, so he was not afraid to get in there and mix it up with the whale and try to save him. Some lifeguards jumped in to help as well, other folks. All right there, it took about an hour before the animal got back into deep enough water to finally swim away. We love animal rescue. Yeah, we do, especially when uh, the person that spots the beached whale is a member of the world famous All Blacks rugby team yeah. from New Zealand. From New Zealand. That's so. pretty cool. That is go. cool. All right. He wasn't scared of no whale. No, not no. at all. Thank you, David. All right. right now it's 909, about 70 degrees. And a seven year old girl from Arkansas going viral after writing a letter to Old Navy asking them to put real pockets on girls' jeans. How the company responded. It's a great story. Hey, this week's episode of KSAT Explains tackles why the state's power grid was so vulnerable during February's big winter storm. Myra Arthur and RJ Marquez break down the episode for us later in the newscast. And voters will decide the fate of two propositions during city elections in May. After the break, what you need to know about Proposition A. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up about 20 points at 33,450. You are watching GMSA at 9. Changing words in the San Antonio City Charter could have an impact on housing options and other public projects. In May, San Antonians will vote on Proposition A, which pertains to broadening the scope of future bond projects. So a bare facts case at San Antonio Report poll released this week shows 56% of those polled were leaning towards a yes vote on Proposition A, with 27% leaning towards no. Patty Santos explains what Proposition A does. The city of San Antonio wants more flexibility in how it uses future bond money. Municipal law attorney Frank Garza explains right now the city can only ask voters to approve bonds to fix streets and make other capital improvements. But it's limiting. You can't use it for affordable housing projects. Something the city wants to do. Prop A asks voters to approve a charter change so it can issue bonds for public improvements or any other public purpose allowed by the Texas Constitution. The chartered language simply gives the council more flexibility as to what to issue bonds for. The check and balance is always going to be the voters. The voters can say yes or no. Brooks Development Authority's Board of Directors supports Prop A because of the focus on creating affordable housing. It really just puts another tool in the toolbox. It does not transfer any additional authority than currently exists today. But Councilman Clayton Perry is against it. We'll have to be giving up something to do what that requires. He says it will drain much needed tax dollars from fixing roads and other city facilities to fund whatever future pet projects city council wants. Yes, everybody would love to have affordable housing here in San Antonio, but they don't realize that it's coming out of their uh, tax dollars that should be going for other things like good streets, good drainage, and all of those infrastructure related items. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And Perry says there's already federal funds that the city receives to fund affordable housing projects. You can read more about Prop A and the other stuff in the Bear Facts Report right now on our website at KSAT.com. And there's another proposition on the ballot, this one aimed at police reform. Proposition B would repeal the San Antonio Police Officer Union's ability to collectively bargain for a contract. Tomorrow you'll hear from the different sides of this issue. The Bear Facts KSAT San Antonio Report Partnership will host a live stream debate on the proposition. The San Antonio Police Union Fix SAPD and the city attorney are invited to discuss the impacts of Prop B. Our Steve Spreester will be moderating the debate along with Iris Dimmick from the San Antonio Report. You can watch the live stream on KSAT.com. That's tomorrow at 7. 
as Justin rejoins us now. You were saying earlier, looking at that shot back towards downtown, uh, mm -hmm. that it looks murky out there. My speculation is that it's every allergen known to man flooding the air over South Texas. It feels like it, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, the allergens have been awful, notably oak. It's mm -hmm. at its highest point today, so it's uh, giving a lot of people issues. Uh, a lot of Zyrtec being used today, I would imagine. We're also on cold front watch, believe it or not. Uh, we are watching the clouds because we can really clearly see where that front is. It's uh, moving into Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's passed through San Angelo and working its way towards the hill country. You see the line of clouds right there. That's our front. We're not going to get too excited about it, though, because it really doesn't do a whole lot for us other than usher in some drier air. It doesn't bring us any rain, although we are seeing some showers and storms trying to blossom here north and east of I-10, but really moving out of our area. So as you zoom out some, you see the clear skies across West Texas. They're behind the front. Out ahead of it, there is some moisture and there will be some storms today. It'll just likely be east of us. We can see very clearly, clearly where the front is with our dew point map as well. Very humid conditions out ahead of it. Very dry conditions behind it with dew points in the 30s. That's what we have to look forward to. Dew points will fall off significantly this afternoon. Temperatures, not so much. Yes, it is cooler up in the Texas Panhandle, 48 Lubbock, 46 Amarillo, but we really don't get to feel that. The drier air will allow for some slightly cooler temperatures tomorrow morning, so there is that. The dew point forecast here over the next uh, 12 hours or so shows the dew point falling off into the 40s this evening and then maybe building back a little bit as we get into tomorrow morning, but it will feel a lot better. High temperatures today in the 90s once that dry air moves in. We should be able to heat up pretty efficiently, and so highs uh, should be close to 90 here in San Antonio, some 90s out west. This is about where we were yesterday. Outside right now, we've got low clouds still, 71 degrees at the airport, 72 Stinson, 72 at Kelly, 71 at Randolph. South-southwesterly winds anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. We're at 73 in New Braunfels, 69 Canyon Lake, 67 in Lost Maples, and 66 in Rock Springs. A lot of 70s south and east of town where that moisture is still very thick. So here's what our forecast looks like. That front comes through. Yes, there could be a shower storm or two as far west as maybe LaGrange, maybe Howlettsville and Gonzales, but the chances are low. Front comes through and then by tomorrow morning, we're dealing with a little bit of cloud cover and then we break out the sun on your Thursday afternoon. The air will still be fairly dry, so temperatures will really jump up tomorrow. And that will be the case on Friday, too. The only difference being that we will have a dry line setting up on Friday, some upper level energy moving in. And so we could see a thunderstorm or two develop along the dry line. Chances of that happening are low. If we did see that, though, we could see a couple of strong storms, as we mentioned yesterday. Right now, the Storm Prediction Center has areas north and east of us underneath the site risk, not here in San Antonio. So we're going to keep the rain chances low for now. 10% chance of some showers and storms east today. 95 tomorrow after starting off with some fog. 96 Friday, there's your 30% chance of a few storms in the afternoon. Then cooler this weekend. 85 Saturday, 89 Sunday, we should see plenty of sun over the weekend. Really a pretty nice weekend and another chance for some showers and storms on Monday, guys. Yeah, the weekend does look nice. Thank you, yeah. Justin. Mm -hmm. Still ahead on GMS 8 and 9. Why do some pants for girls and women have fake pockets? It's a question many women have asked for years, and now a seven-year-old from Arkansas is doing something to change it. How her letter to Old Navy is going viral. Welcome back. 923, a very persuasive letter was signed, sealed, and delivered to Old Navy complaining about one of their products. But it wasn't penned by a celebrity or a member of Congress. It was composed by a seven-year-old girl from Arkansas. ABC's Will Gans tells us how the company responded. Cameron Gardner is a pocket-sized inspiration. I didn't like the fake pockets because I like pockets. Right after she learned about persuasive writing in her first grade class. Well, it actually wasn't really an assignment. It was like a couple days after we learned about it. Cameron put pen to paper. She was just really frustrated with her jeans not having pockets while her brothers had pockets. I was going to just tell the Old Navy people, but I don't know them, so... I decided to write a letter. 
the seven-year-old putting this letter in the mail. Dear Old Navy, I do not like that the front pockets of the girls' jeans are fake. Would you consider making girls' jeans with front pockets that are not fake? Mom and dad were surprised when corporate wrote back. I was really grateful that they took the time to write a letter back in the same way that she had sent them a letter. Old Navy saying, thank you so much for taking the time to write us about pockets on girls' jeans. It's great feedback for us as we develop new product. But even better, they sent Cameron four pairs of girls' jeans with pockets. Yes, the back and the front. Cameron bringing the jeans to school to show her classmates, teachers, and friends. What's your advice to people like me or maybe kids your own age who think that they can't use their voice to create change like you did? I would tell them to write a letter and um, if they don't have a parent to help, just sound out the words. Now Cameron can sound out the words of encouragement that are pouring in online. Way to go, Cameron. Keep speaking up for girls. Keep speaking up, young one. You'll run the world someday. Just want to say how proud we are of Cameron for um, speaking up and sharing her voice. I asked Cameron what she wants to be when she grows up, and she says she wants to be a teacher, and she plans on recruiting her older brother so they can run for president and vice president together. Good thing she's already used to using her voice for good. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Way to go, Cameron yeah, Gardner. Awesome job. I didn't know they taught persuasive writing in the in first, first grade. grade. I well, we we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> My little girls in the first grade, very impressive. Well, also super smart of Old Navy to respond yes. and yeah. not only follow up, but, but send, send her the product. Send her the jeans with pockets that uh, she can use. I see, I have a son. You have a daughter. <laughs> I had no idea that the front pocket thing was a thing. Uh, for, so, I mean, I, I don't have just Old Navy clothing, but, right. you know, uh, some, some outfits for the kids come with them. Fake and, pockets. And some of them don't have hmm. them. So, yeah. Okay. Good job, Cameron. Well, Cameron Gardner is on to something, and the world has begun to change. 926 on your Wednesday morning. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady getting into the NFT business. Details on some of the unique digital collectibles you could buy from him. Colorado preacher has a hobby that her previous congregation thought was sinful. Instead of giving it up, she changed churches. How she's trying to change people's perception of pole dancing. And why was Texas's power grid so vulnerable during February's winter storm? It's a question the Case That Explains team sought to answer in a new episode out now. After the break, Myra Arthur and RJ Marcus explain their findings. Let's check Transkyde if you have to head out the door here as we approach 930 on your Wednesday morning. Traffic looks great. Even there at 35 and Evans. We had an incident there earlier, but it has cleared up in the last 27 minutes or so. And welcome back. It's 930 in mid February. Texas was hit with a winter storm that left millions of people in the cold and in the dark. Since then, there have been a lot of questions about why the state's power grid was so vulnerable. It's this topic of this week's case that explains Myra Arthur and RJ Marquez break down the episode for us. It is spring now in South Texas. The snow and ice that we saw in February, it is long since melted, mm -hmm. but the memory of that winter storm will not fade away so quickly. And that's the focus of this newest episode of KSAT Explains. How did that massive power failure across the state happen? What led up to it? What were the root causes? And who were the key players and what were they responsible for? All questions we're looking at in this episode. Yeah, Myra, it's hard to believe it's been about a month and a half since that happened and we're still obviously feeling the aftermath of that the effects of it and for this episode we really just wanted to break down as you mentioned the key players including ERCOT that was a big piece that you worked on really kind of simplifying what it is what they do CPS's relationship to ERCOT I thought that was important to get across in this episode and uh, several other things that have sort of took place because again it's been about six weeks and uh, we're still dealing with uh, with this winter storm yeah you know when we were all in the thick of it a lot of us without power and without water. Of course, there were questions about how this happened, but we were all trying to just get through that week. And Absolutely. now, really, we've had time to digest what happened, but still, we wanted to, to take this time to answer a lot of those questions and explain like a lot of some of the basics. What is ERCOT? How does it work with CPS Energy, mm -hmm. like you mentioned? Who was ultimately responsible for what? 
in Texas. How did we get so close to what would have been, what experts say would have been a blackout that could have lasted for months, just a few minutes yeah. away from that scenario? That is still unbelievable to think about that, that we could have been in the dark for weeks, uh, for weeks on weeks. So I, I think this was important to kind of get across as far as uh, what CPS is doing here and just sort of moving ahead here and also learning what a polar vortex is, how we even got into the situation yes. to begin with. Yeah, explaining the weather event itself is something we're also doing in this episode. And like our meteorologist Katie Blake and Sarah Spivey will tell you, it's a matter of time before we see something else like this again. Of course, it is rare for South Texas, not something right. that we want to deal with or normally deal with but it will happen again. And so something I've liked to say about this episode, we don't know what that will look like mm -hmm. or when that will happen. We don't know if we'll be in the same situation then with those rolling blackouts or um, just blackouts for days on end, which so many people experience. But after this episode, if you take the time to watch, you will not be in the dark when it comes to understanding how our state power grid works and who is responsible for what when it comes to making sure that your heat and your lights are on. So check out this latest episode, ksat.com slash explains right now. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are at actually at 71 degrees, but yeah, overall still a little warmer this morning than it has been in a while. And watching that ksat explains stuff, I still have to pinch myself to think that that was, you know, just a couple months ago, mm -hmm. we were at nine degrees. Now we got blue bonnets and temperatures in the 70s. Uh, it's going to be really warm next couple days. I'll warn you there. We'll be in the mid 90s, I think, by the week's end. Uh, take a look at this picture, though, on our case. I connect. This is a beautiful shot. Blue bonnets really starting to show up now. It's supposed to be a pretty good year for wildflowers. We'll see how it turns out, but uh, it has been pretty nice as of late. This is out in Brenham. Always a good spot. Check out the blue bonnets. We appreciate the picture as usual. And here's a look at today's highs. We're thinking 90 here in San Antonio. Notice it will be a little bit cooler up across North Texas. We're waiting on a frontal battery. It'll be, it'll be here about midday or so, a little after probably. It's not going to cool us down really. It just draws in some drier air and that allows the temperatures to be pretty warm later today. Right now we're at 71. Dew point is at 65. South Southwesterly winds at 9. It is very humid out there, so some drier air will feel better. 89 by 3 o'clock, 90 are high temperature. Southerly winds becoming northerly. 10 to 20 miles per hour and uh, we'll see even hotter temperatures next couple days. We'll look at that forecast in the weekend here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Traffic is light at 281 near 410 over by the airport right now at just about 935. Trending stories this morning. Tom Brady going digital and a fancy new face mask is about to hit the market. And how much will a lock of your hair be worth one day? Our David Sears is back to explain all of this. Whose hair? Your hair? I just hope Her we hair? have some later on. Okay. Yeah, She's I got know. No problem. Yes. The rest of us, like you and me. Well, you never I mean, know. You know. There is a male pattern there. Yeah, they better get it now. <laughs> no. I'm going to clip it and save it for centuries to come. First off, let's talk about what Tom Brady is doing. Tom Brady is clicking into the cryptocurrency world. The seven time Super Bowl champ starting an NFT platform and calling it Autograph NFT non fungible tokens. It is digital content. Brady says he's going to be bringing in some of the biggest names in sports, entertainment, fashion, pop culture. His site's going to be working to create and develop unique digital collectibles. The autograph site will also have interactive events like live auctions, physical product drops, and in-person meetups. I, I, you know, I'm kind of technically illiterate. I don't get this. I, I, I don't understand why you want to purchase something you can't actually touch and feel and have. It's it's been a thing lately. It's I know, really like like it's artwork just... and um, I know it's hard for me to wrap my head around it also and it's so funny because working here at the station we have something called NFT not for today <laughs> like a not for today story and I was reading this and like what? I was what? like oh that that NFT. It's not non-fungible tokens it's <laughs> well, stories. You, you yeah. got somebody bragging about this painting they have and you walk in their house going hey where's this wonderful oh it's on my computer you got to go look at it. Right. No I want to see it on your wall above the fireplace or something. It, you're I, not the only one it's a little hard to grab. Yes, yeah, I don't get it. OK, well, at least I'm not the only one then. All right. We have all heard of the rapper Will I Am, Justin. Now he is Will I Am, soon to be even richer if I pull this off. The member of the <laughs> Black Eyed Peas announced this week that he is teaming up with Honeywell. They came up with a new face mask. They got a name for it. It's called, I can't even pronounce it. It's X-U-P-E-R. Is it Zupermax? 
I don't. How do you how do you pronounce that? I, I, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah like super, super, I think super, you're right. Yeah. All right, so here's what it has. It has a three-speed fan, air filters. Of course, it has to have a Bluetooth connection, mm. LED day glow lights. Oh, that's not it. There's more on this one mask. Noise-canceling audio. You can use a mic with it. An earbud docking system. And, oh, yeah, the battery lasts for seven hours. One of the mask designers helped actually design Elon Musk's SpaceX suits. His name is Jose Fernandez. It'll be released tomorrow. It's 300 bucks. It has not been approved by the Food and Drug Administration, though. Steph's like, yeah, but it does this exfoliate. Yeah. <laughs> it does everything else, does, right? Does it come in pink? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Probably so. Probably $300. But you know, somebody's going to buy it. Yeah, but I'm that's sure. a lot of stuff yeah. on your face, yeah. right? I mean, mm -hmm. the mask is going to weigh five pounds. And now we think about, again, it makes me think of Bane from the Dark Knight yes. movies. That exactly. whole thing going on. Anyway. And finally, we were talking about locks of hair a while ago. A lock of Georgia Washington hair sold for nearly 40 grand. The hair apparently stored in a handmade brass and glass locket, according to Leland's auction house. The word is that the hair came from his head close to or right after his death back in 1799. Well, well there you go. That's George Washington. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Why. So, you know. We checked, and ours is worth 40 cents. <laughs> Wow, that much. Yeah. Good for you. It's up to just 10 cents in the last hour. Thank Aww. you, David. Not as much as the glass locket. <laughs> no. I know, right? No. Thank you, sir. 9.38 on your Wednesday morning. You're watching GMSA at 9. A pastor in Colorado had to change churches in order to continue enjoying her hobby. Why she's trying to end the stigma surrounding um, pole dancing. 9.42. The church and pole dancing, two things most people say really don't go together. But a preacher in Colorado says she uses pole dancing as a way to heal from the stresses of ministry. As KMGH's Jason Grinnell reports, the pastor had to change congregations to continue her hobby. Come back up, set your hands. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you see this? Everyone thinks that we are all just exotic dancers. Like, I'm gonna climb. Or this. Hang first. People think that we come in here and we're all just like taking off our clothes. and we're. When in reality. It is a full body workout with one leg bent, one leg straight. Beautiful ladies. You are lifting your full body weight up off the ground multiple times throughout the entire class. Look at you, close up. Oh. Those who teach and take classes here at Pole Revolution say they're used to snap judgments. We've known of teachers that have gotten fired just from participating in pole classes because it's not a good look. They meet those negative perceptions, that stigma with acceptance. It doesn't matter your body type. You can be tall, short, big, small. Um, it works for everybody. Everybody, including Diane Martin. So I took that intro lesson and I was just in love immediately. She started taking pole sport classes. Well, vertical gymnastics, basically. Knowing she wasn't like everyone else at the studio. I was like 20 years older than most of my fellow students. Sure, her age set her apart, but the thing that made her stand out most was her profession. I am assistant pastor at Pikes Peak Metropolitan Community Church, which is an um, open and affirming church here in Colorado Springs. Good morning, Pikes Peak MCC. Pastor Martin started doing pole workouts 11 years ago. And it was uh, a healthy way, a healthy approach to uh, to healing from the stresses of ministry. The reaction from her church at the time? I have been called a harlot. Some of them actually asked me to take the magnets off the side of my car when I pulled into town so that I could keep it hidden. Martin pushed through that stigma. Not only did she change churches, she decided to buy the pole studio. God didn't uncall me to the ministry when I discovered pole. In your many names we pray, amen. At my current church, they are thrilled. They're, they're proud of it and they love it. The pole dancing pastor pushing past others' perceptions. Pole allows a level of self-expression that is hard to find in, 
day-to-day -day life. Really, it just goes to show that anybody in the community can be part of a Pulse studio. Krista Moss bought the studio a few years ago, but kept Diane on as an instructor. Basic. As their sport looks to break down its own barriers. There's no way. We are actually in the observation period for an Olympic event, so it, we could potentially have Pulse Sport in the Olympics in 2024. And if you don't think this is Olympic worthy. Outside, inside, outside, inside. Or this isn't what a pastor looks like. All right, should I try a layback? Diane has a routine to show you. This is working all right. They come with preconceived ideas of what someone who does pole is. They come with preconceived ideas of what a pastor is like. And it kind of explodes both of those ideas and gets them to maybe look at things a little bit different way. And that was KMGH's Jason Grenauer from Colorado Springs. So right now it's unclear if the 2024 Olympics in Paris will host pole dancing as an event for the first time. The pandemic has impacted Olympic planning and right now it looks like break dancing may be the new sport added instead of pole dancing. I did see that and that would be different. Uh, time now is 946, about 72 degrees out there. A little humid start, but uh, we're expecting 90s, even 95. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's going to be warm next couple of days. Good transition, by the way. I was worrying what was going to happen there. Uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look at the oak count. Uh, this is where uh, it gets really bad. This is the number we didn't want to see today. 18,970. That's where it is today. Now the highest count so far this season beats yesterday. And basically the last five days or so we've seen that uh, number up above 10,000 and that uh, puts it in the very high category. So it's been pretty rough with the oak. It's everywhere. Uh, it's going to be here for several more days. So we're just going to have to sort of deal with it, I guess. Uh, hopefully we'll get through uh, the season here and maybe it'll end a little bit earlier uh, with it usually peaking in mid April. Looking at the dew points, we know where our front is. Uh, it's drawing in some drier air. Should be here by about midday and by the afternoon, we'll see those dew points in the 30s. So the dew points will fall off. The drier air will move in and we'll get temperatures in the 90s uh, a little bit later today. The moisture will stay along the coast. So it stays humid there, but most of Texas will be enjoying some of that drier air. High temperatures right around 90 here in town today. That's where we were yesterday. 95 in Laredo, 93 in Del Rio, but it will be slightly cooler across North Texas behind that front. Outside, we've got uh, mostly cloudy skies, 71 degrees. Sun's trying to shine through, but so far still cloudy for most of us. South southwesterly winds at nine miles per hour. You see the clouds trying to break up a little bit, and there is our front. Uh, nice line of clouds right along the front. Unfortunately, it's not generating any showers. There have been a few out towards LaGrange and College Station, but none for us. We're not expecting much. 68 Rock Springs, 72 in Uvalde, 72 Kerrville, 74 down there in Catula. And uh, again, forecast high temperatures today right around 90 here in town. We'll go as high as 95 out towards Carrizo Springs. And as far as any rain goes, this model does produce a couple of showers around LaGrange and College Station, as I mentioned, but just not far enough west to give us any rain here in town. The moisture returns briefly tomorrow morning. That may give us some fog and then uh, dry air works in again tomorrow afternoon. So it's another hot day on your Thursday. Same story Friday. Now the one change on Friday will be some upper level energy that moves in. We'll have a dry line. There could be a few thunderstorms that form right along the dry line, especially as you get up towards Dallas, Waco. But even here, we'll have to watch for the possibility. There's going to be a pretty good cap on the atmosphere, so that probably keeps the rain out of the picture. But if we were to get a storm, it could be strong to severe. Right now, the Storm Prediction Center has northeast Texas within a slight risk. It does not include us. We'll see if that changes next couple days. It's really going to depend on how strong that cap is. Uh, we'll call for a 10% chance of a shower east of San Antonio. Most of us stay dry. 90 degrees, 95 tomorrow, mostly sunny after morning fog. Then a 30% chance of showers and storms east of I-35 Friday, 96. It does cool down some this weekend. 85 Saturday, 89 Sunday. We'll get some more chances for rain Monday. I wish we had higher rain chances here, but so far staying in that 20 to 30% range, guys. All right. At least it's not as hot this weekend, Justin. True. Thank you. Yeah. Just about 10 till, we're at about 71 degrees. And last week we told you about a terminally ill San Antonio teen who was hoping Bruno Mars would help her celebrate her 18th birthday and graduation. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, we have an awesome update. What gifts the singer sent her?
Good morning. Hello there. Coming up on live, Dennis Leary from the Moody's. Plus, Jennifer Ashton updates us on COVID vaccinations. We'll see you soon on live. And today on SA Live, a woman who went viral on TikTok for her interior design tips are back to talk to Mike and Fiona. So Magdalena Mendez will show us simple ways to update a dated dining room from changing the color of your chairs to adding more light and life to the space. Um, he had something that was a little bit more dimming and um, so we wanted a brighter space, especially during the nighttime. And so we brought in the chandelier that just makes it gives it that modern, beautiful farmhouse touch that just goes now with this perfectly with the space. And you can check out more of Magdalena's interior design tips today at one on SA Live. All right, we're at 71 right now, 90 this afternoon. Some drier air works in uh, later today and into tonight. 95 tomorrow. We'll start off with a little bit of fog and then really warm tomorrow afternoon. It'll be hot Friday too. Few thunderstorms possible Friday afternoon, guys. Spurs start their five game road trip tonight in Denver back to back against the Nuggets. They might want to keep their eye on this guy, Nikolo Jokic. Yeah, he uh, averages 26 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists. Number one in all three of those categories for mm -hmm. the Nuggets. So, you know, defend that guy, and you might have a chance at winning this one tonight. The Spurs, 2-8 and eight in their last 10. Mm -hmm. They did beat Denver back in March, though. So okay. That's well, something. we're on the road now. Different, well, let's, different let's scenery. Do it, let's do it in April, then. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. Okay. Go Thank Spurs, you. go. Thank you, David. We have a bittersweet follow-up for you here on a story we recently did about a terminally ill San Antonio teen hoping to celebrate her 18th birthday, birthday with uh, singer Bruno Mars. Yeah, uh, we're talking about Heaven Sanchez, uh, who's uh, 17, and she has brain cancer. And uh, her mother was wanting to take her to a concert, uh, but that didn't work out. It got canceled because of the pandemic. So they reached out to Bruno Mars. And here's what's happened. Happy birthday, Heaven. Love your biggest fan, Bruno Mars. <gasps> Look, Heaven. Oh, my God. He gave you a sign. He sent this to you. It's a signed picture. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now Heaven is ecstatic seeing that autographed picture right from Bruno Mars. Understand he also sent her some flowers. Yeah, he sent her he sent her a big arrangement of flowers, and uh, they had a, a, a drive-by parade for Heaven this this past week. And um, you know, of course, they want there. You go. That's a that's a picture. That's a video of the flowers that mm -hmm. he sent her. So nice of Bruno to stop and uh, take a moment for one of his biggest fans here in San Antonio. Kevin Sanchez. Yeah, and then her mom, Stephanie Sanchez, sending that video to us. We want to thank you for sending that video. You guys have a great day.